Merhabalar ben Şükrü. Mikves Telios ile kurucusu oldukları Gezer Fund projesi hakkında konuşacağız. Bu proje Bitcoin ile Bitcoin ile alakalı projelerin desteklenmesini, fonlanmasını sağlayan bir girişim projesi. Umarım bu bölüm hoşunuza gidecektir. Hi everyone, today I'm together with Stelios and Mick and we will be talking about Gazer Fund, which is their project. They run it together and yeah, I'm excited to hear uh, about Gazer Fund from them. I'm already kind of experienced on the website, but I'm sure they have so much in, yeah, uh, so much that they can tell about the project as well. So hi Stelios. Hey, pleasure to be here. Yeah, and hi, Mick. Uh, hey, guys. So good to be here. So I met Stelios actually a couple of years ago. I don't know if you know this story. He was running a uh, lightning spark. Uh, it was like a yeah, tool uh, in which people who retweet certain tweets or like them uh, get paid in lightning. So it was a experiment for you, I guess. Yeah, it was my first uh, Lightning application, my first kind of steps into Lightning development. Uh, and my first experience also with the community and seeing just how supportive they were in, in helping me out. Uh, I was using at the time Ellen Bits, which has grown so much as a, pro uh, as a project since I just added so many extensions, so many functionalities. But already at the time, it was a pretty usable uh, project like it, it, it worked great as a backend to the to the lightning spark idea uh, and you were one of my first users uh, i remember reaching out to you and saying hey do you want to test it out uh, and you said yes immediately and just sent a few sites funded a, a tweet and seeing just uh, the community getting behind it and, and, and excited about it because yeah got me into lightning even more Yeah, we tried our best, but your machine learning didn't uh, yeah, process the Turkish language, as I remember. So it thought all the accounts that retweeted or liked, yeah, they were bots or something. So but well, well, right. it worked for a couple of people, which was okay. It was fun to That's see. Right. It was a bit too sensitive in the, in the spam, pre spam prevention. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for something like that, uh, If I, as a customer, if I got your service and if bots literally spammed it, I would be pissed. So yeah, spam protection was necessary at the time. Yeah. So after uh, Elan Spark, so basically, how did you guys meet and decide to start on a project? Cool. Happy to jump in. I yeah. So I mean, it started kind of coincidentally. I I, I believe I. I came across uh, Lightning Spark uh, that the status was working on. Um, but then when, when it really caught my attention was when I uh, encountered an article he had written about Lightning. And I believe it was really about like Lightning adoption. Uh, and I also had some technical know-how. So it was clear that Sirius no knew what he was talking about when he came to Lightning. And <clears throat> it was, I believe, the summer of 2020, uh, uh, 2020 actually. And um, I was starting to deep dive with lightning started to look into looking into it uh starting to run my own node uh playing with it and um and at the same time i was noticing all the fuss in other realms realms of crypto so it was more my my shitcoin phase and realizing like but but look at what's happening with lightning you know people were paying hundreds of dollars to send in tr transactions here and there and then like you had something like Lightning, and nobody was talking about it so it was really like going down the rabbit hole of lightning and realizing, okay, this is something so important, so revolutionary. Uh, why is nobody doing stuff on it? And um, and that's when I reached out to Stelios and, you know, we, we, we chatted a bit and asked a few questions about like, what are the possibilities with lightning? Uh, and um, and then after a few a few months or perhaps it was around a year after, we, uh, we had another conversation where I um, kind of decided that, okay, I want to actually build something on lightning. Uh, and I have thought of um, of building a crowdfunding platform of sorts uh, because I've noticed there's so much activity, so many people having ideas, so many people uh, wanting to do things on Bitcoin and on Lightning. And there's very little, actually no place at all to, for, yeah. for, for people to uh, take those ideas uh, and uh, get support for them uh, and, and actually take them forward into, into actually long lasting projects where 
you know, as a funder, I can go back to and see how the project is doing, see how the project is evolving. Uh, instead, these ideas sort of were born on Twitter where everything, all the action is, but then they sort of evaporated and diluted and nothing really ever was done or the project sort of uh, were, uh, 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 the project was sort of uh, also like disintegrate. And so I thought, okay, it really is a, there's a need for a platform or of sorts. And so my initial idea was actually something that was very deeply integrated with Twitter so that actually each tweet was a project. It's like, I wanna do this thing and then you can take anyone's tweet and you can crowdfund that tweet and only the owner of the tweet could redeem the funds. Uh, that was the initial idea. And then we chatted with people it. know about the, this origin But then story. you realize that there are so many people wanting to do so many things and... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then with Stelios, we, you know, I, I pitched him the idea. Uh, you know, he, he, he liked it. We noticed that there was really a, a, a market need for something like this, that it was, you know, very much a, a no brainer that you need crowdfunding uh, and Bitcoin and Lightning are, are the best, really the best tools in that Lightning really is the transactional layer of Bitcoin that is a seamless, that enables microtransactions and that can be interoperable with the entire ecosystem uh, that is, goes beyond crowdfunding. Uh, so yeah, so that's sort of how we started uh, around uh, a year ago. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, he, he liked the idea. We, uh, we, we decided to jump into, into this together, you know, me bringing the design uh, mm -hmm. product and uh, um, kind of other side of, sides of things and he bring in more the, the, the technical side and then we had another person coming in as an advisor to support us and in, in the building of the, of the front end as well uh so Zal, that definitely deserves to be mentioned as well and uh yeah did i miss anything Stelios? no that's, that's pretty much it i mean we we started really slowly just with ideation yeah. and talking about the project and uh we were both busy with, with other things at the beginning but then the more we talked about it, the more we realized that there's really something here. Uh, this is a tool that is missing. This is something that can benefit the, the Bitcoin space and Bitcoin adoption. Um, and yeah, it's kind of, it, it won us over uh, more and more and it got more serious and bigger and more important in, in our lives. And yeah, here we are today, pretty much full time on it. So yeah, like um, you probably know there's Telecoin uh that was used working on crow, uh you know crowdfunding but the problem with that was it was too scattered for example and if you wanted to run lightning you had to yeah uh, run your physical node somewhere and it was like a big barrier for a lot of people so you guys passed that and yeah every project is together now so it gets, gets more visibility let's say i like bitcoin racing for example i go on for Bitcoin racing, and then I see, I know Anita's project, and I support it, and yeah, it's it's pretty good. I really like the experience of yeah playing around Gazer Farm. Cheers, man. Thank you. Yeah, I mean Tali is doing a good job, and to be very honest, we we had looked in when we first did the research, we did realize there was there was Tali, and I think what Jeff, Jeff Booth did is is definitely visionary. We started like three years or four years ago, and it's kept on going as a as a as a as a, a sort of uh, uh, like hobby uh, amateur project, uh, which is mm -hmm. you know pretty pretty good. So he launched the recent uh, V3, which uh, which is also pretty good. It has a feed and it's also you know more discovery. Um, uh, I guess to um, what we have now, Geyser is still very much a pilot, and you'll see in the coming weeks that what we what we uh, what we will launch is uh, is definitely. Uh, trying to change what, what crowdfunding uh, really is. Uh, it's really moving towards uh, what we call dynamic crowdfunding. Uh, if you think about crowdfunding today from Kickstarter to Talico, and it's always the same kind of static page that, you know, mm -hmm. you can see it's like, you know, it's always the same. You always go to the project page and it's always the same. Um, and uh, maybe you can update it, but there's no way to actually update to your, your users on, on the progress of the project. And so mm -hmm. what we're going to be doing is, uh, uh, in, in the coming weeks, we'll be, we'll be announcing it, is essentially allowing you to create a project that has multiple posts, a bit like a blog, really, that you can keep your, uh, you know, keep updating uh, with posts. And every time you update, you update a post, um, uh, a user can receive a notification in their email, if they subscribe to it, um, oh. and, um, like and make your own newsletter inside. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah exactly so that and then you'll have uh 
also the ability to fund directly on every blog post. So it's like every time you create a, a piece of engaging content, you can you can take an action and fund and support. And so this incentivizes this idea that uh, you're not just creating this page and leaving it there, but you're actively getting your community engaged into the project. You know, you're actively by making uh, the site dynamic. You also like ask for dynamic, uh, yeah, uh, fundraisers basically. So it's exactly it's very and the yeah, content. That's, that's right. Um, one of the insights we had as well is that there's a lot of people that like talking about projects that they enjoy uh, and that they support. And so what we're thinking about in, in a future iteration of these posts is to allow actually community members to write content or create podcasts or anything for the project. And then that all lives under the same project on the platform and it can contribute to bringing traffic and visibility to the project uh, and funding ultimately if anyone uh, wants to fund those through, through entries. Yeah. So let's say I go to the Silverstone racing track this weekend and I watch the Bitcoin racing team and I can write a story about the pupusas they serve and everything, basically. Oh man, I was yeah. excited to see the pupusas uh, being served yeah. in the UK because El Salvador is really far away and yeah, as I sometimes crave the yeah uh, national food pupusas. So right. So, so in that example, you're creating a story uh, that you're forwarding then all the stats that you receive to Bitcoin Racing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that story can also be platformed in other mediums such as news sites or basically you'll I'll get a QR exactly. code to forward yeah. to the uh, project. So we've even yeah. gone beyond the QR code and, and we've implemented the lightning addresses that have gained a lot in popularity recently. Uh, and for anyone listening that doesn't know what a lightning address is, it looks exactly like an email address. Uh, and for a project, it would look something like the Bitcoin racing at geyser.fund. Mm -hmm. And then essentially the project owner can use that lightning address and plug it in anywhere where, where they support it. Uh, for example, they can add it to their Twitter profile and then the Albi extension recognizes it immediately, uh, a little browser extension to, to send out lightning payments. And someone looking at your Twitter profile can fund your Geyser project without even knowing what Geyser is at the end of the yeah. day, uh, which is a powerful concept we can get into more. So do you get like your lightning address extension recorded in uh, the Albi app? For example, geyser.fund, does it like recognize it or? It does recognize it also if you're on the platform. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Albi has gone the extra step to actually recognize that if you have it as the URL of your Twitter profile, if it's mm -hmm. a pendant mm -hmm. with a lightning bolt, okay. and then they have this sweet little interface to make it really so, fun. Last week, actually, we talked uh, with Kale BTC about LN bits, LN URL, and all, Lightning addresses as well. But the web LN part is still missing. Uh, hopefully, yeah, I'll talk about web LN and I'll be in the future as well. So uh, I uh, checked your presentation in uh, Honey Badger Riga. Uh, it was also talking about like interoperability and protocols versus platforms so yeah would you like to make a brief summary of that presentation like what the protocol is and how it differs from a platform and yeah how can you uh, get the interoperability by joining the platforms and the protocols together yeah i think both status and i you know have a lot to say uh, say on this i think um, maybe I'll just give a quick high level, uh, and then Celis can can correct me or, or add add more. Uh, but basically, I think the the, the TLDR is that um, the internet that we've lived in, um, we w like for the majority of people just use platforms, and, and platforms are just companies that are building specific use cases, um, and most people really very rarely interact with with, with protocols. Now the protocols are like really like bottom layer uh, um, uh, elements of, of the stack, really. The foundation. 
they're really the foundations of, of a building, right? Really, like uh, of a building or even the building, I guess, is the application. The, the, mm -hmm. the foundation is, is, the, is the soil, is like the earth. Like that's the that's protocol, I guess, level. And that, the protocol, or I guess you could say the, the plumbing, uh, the plumbing mm -hmm. is what connects every building together and makes, uh, makes, it, all, makes it all really uh, work, but also enables buildings to be connected to one another. Uh, use, for example, a telephone line and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Um, and the, the point of protocols is to create these uh, points of connections, uh, which I guess, I guess we call interoperability. It's really what connects one platform to another platform. Um, and, you know, we live in a world where social media companies, uh, banks, uh, all these are essentially just like platforms that are building the, almost like the entire stack. And I think only now recently have we started to think about uh, the potential of, uh, of, of, of really improving experiences and providing new experiences um, uh, by, by, by really uh, connecting them a lot more in terms of uh, with, with protocols. So, excuse me, to give you an idea, think about, for example, if you're on Twitter and you're sending a tweet and then you can read that tweet from Facebook or you can read that tweet from Instagram, or if you're sending a tweet from, from and, and even, even further, if you're sending a tweet, if you like a tweet on, on Twitter and you like it, uh, and on Facebook or LinkedIn, you see that like as well. It's like, it's all connected. Uh, now, the platform still get to, gets to make a, a call whether that's a good idea or not. Um, but what we're seeing in the presentation is that this enables uh, actually uh, to, platforms to, to, to make a, to, to have a competitive advantage over other, other platforms, because by integrating with protocols, you have this effect of actually increasing your reach, uh, users, getting new users, um, and, um, without barriers. experiences exactly without, without barriers. So, uh, I guess to bring the point home with what we're doing in Geyser is if you look at what we've done with, uh, our integration with, uh, what uh, you mentioned with, the LNU URL, a QR mm -hmm. code, uh, LNURL pay being a uh, protocol, and then this other, I guess you could call it protocol on top of LNURL called uh, Lightning, uh, Lightning addresses. Um, mm -hmm. These are all interoperable uh, tooling on top of Lightning, um, mm -hmm. which, which is basically is on top of Bitcoin. Exactly, it's like an open protocol of Bitcoin, open protocol of, of Lightning, and an open protocol of LNURL, and. Um, and what that happened? What that happens is an incredible thing. Where, for example, you can listen to a podcast, uh, fund the podcast, and, and and those funds go straight to a crowdfunding campaign on Geyser, and you're able to view uh, and and receive those funds directly because we're using that same uh, monetary protocol of the Lightning address that connects mm -hmm. all of these different things. Um, so, it really, is it is something that I think can enhance user experiences that can be beneficial for platforms like Geyser because. 20% of all Geyser uh, uh, contributors come from outside Geyser and fund from outside of Geyser. So they it's don't not even a... need to visit Geyser to be able to fund the project. So exactly, exactly. So it's it's really it's something we're really passionate about because we think really do think it's it's a future and can enhance the experience again because it, it reduces friction a lot. Uh, it it makes it a lot more accessible. Uh, and it creates all, all, all sorts of crazy network effects and new use cases. Like today, we just discovered that Bitcoin News, uh, which is like a Bitcoin magazine, displays mm -hmm. its widget at the very bottom of the article, where the art that were actually one of our one of our uh, projects uh, wrote an article, uh, and he added his Lightning address. So every time you fund a project, it's viewable on Geyser. Uh, so you can write an article in another platform. People fund you, and those funds go to your crowdfunding campaign. So it's like mind-boggling stuff, and it's just every day there's something new that yeah, someone so builds that they happens. enjoy the article. They can yeah support you, and by supporting you, they automatically support the campaign because you exactly. Yeah. So they're like our users, basically, right? Like think about it that way. They're they're guys are users, even though they don't even come to our page. It's crazy. Yeah. So why the the reason why a lot of the current uh, websites like want to have their own users is because, yeah, for example, even you gave the Twitter example, even in my mobile app, if I click on a link, it takes me to a Twitter browser. 
instead of the because they want to get the most of the data and mm -hmm. yeah create value out of it so they want to keep uh, the user in the ecosystem but in your case it doesn't matter they can support from anywhere they can yeah be a part of the campaign from anywhere that's right and we're, we're really moving away um from the advertisement model uh, not that it has ever been a big part of crowdfunding per se but in the conversation of platforms, it's a very relevant um, thing to say that advertisement is making up the, the main revenue stream for all social media platforms, basically. Um, either direct advertisement through the interface or selling the user data to advertisers. And uh -huh. the value for value model is, is rectifying that, or at least um, that's the hope that it will realign incentives such that it's no longer about keeping your user siloed and keeping all the data stored for the user. Now, if that is not a solution, if, if that is not fixed from the platform side, we still think that the web is moving towards a more distributed storage of the user data so that users that want to store their own data um, can do so uh, on their own computer or use different services that are going to, to host that's that's content for them uh and I, I like the analogy before that you made make that uh you know there's the plumbing or the the, the electrical uh -huh. connections between the buildings i think that would be like an api integration today where a platform has to use a direct connection like a direct direct electrical uh, cable between two buildings whereas protocols are more like radio the, the user is broadcasting their information and, and then it can be displayed in different platforms and perhaps stored in different platforms. That's true. Um, you don't even need to plug in into a yeah. It's almost like a pre-built, uh, yeah. Like a I like the the Wi-Fi idea and the radio system. That's true. It's like ubiquitous. It's there. You just have to plug into it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. Connect to the Wi-Fi basically. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of someone something that I was looking for this tweet. Uh, 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 Psilocybin Citadel play by me. She she does <laughs> great great content. Uh, and she talks about Geyser being the mycelium, uh, the mycelium money money crowdfunding platform. Geyser folks, uh, let's get these ideas spored. And she says oh, talks yeah. about multi sig wallets, crowdfunding via Geyser fund, LN integration, blah blah blah. These are all financial mycelium. And so and then to yeah. respond to that, I said uh, if Bitcoin is the mycelium, Bitcoiners are the mushrooms growing and releasing spores and geyser is the rich human soil where the mushrooms can sprout perfect you know uh last season for this channel i did some uh book summaries and one like i also did brandon quitem's uh mycelium uh article oh, so because good. it's it's one of the best articles it's not a book so but good. as an article is so good agree, and yeah, you know so uh, for example another good yeah, that's a very good uh, definition of Geyser, I think, because uh, let's say I build a Bitcoin project and it's on Geyser. And yeah, I try to supply as much of things from Bitcoiners, like my artwork, I get it from a fellow Bitcoiner and, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. So projects also support the ecosystem and it grows like a mycelium. Yeah. So exactly. should we go and take a look at the website? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's here when I'm it. Okay, perfect. We see you. Nice. Well, right now, actually, we are on a, a project that you are involved with, I believe, yeah. uh, called the Bitcoin Black Sea. Uh, and so this is what the project page looks like for now. You have a, a piece of text here that describes the project and contains a few images to understand what the project is about. Mm -hmm. And then on the right side, you can see the funding information. So you can see everyone that has funded the project and sent a few Satoshis their way. Uh, and you can see also people commenting, saying, hey, this is such a great project, adding a GIF. Uh, so this is really the social element that uh, we could say is missing from a lot of crowdfunding platforms right now. And that make it more engaging and, and more fun as well. And then yeah, on so the uh, yeah you plan to make this even more dynamic by adding some other elements like uh... that's right that's right this this section here with the 
description of the project, that is going to become what we call um, entries or posts. And there will be one of the entries that you can write for the project. Um, maybe we can so, share some, some screen. Yeah, on that. I'm happy to share what, what it will look like. If that helps. Oh, you have some? Yeah. Uh, OK. Uh, yeah, you can also do share screen. Yeah. So let's let's go over the, uh, the end of the flow here. Uh, on the right, you have also a leaderboard that shows mm -hmm. uh, a ranking of people that have contributed. Uh, and then you can earn like a, a small badge if you've funded above a certain amount or, or funded more than once. You can see here, Blockchain Google has funded four times. Four times. So all of this is so, just to make more to, engagement. To get your name written, you need to log in to the website or you can just do anonymous funding like via lightning addresses or whatever if whatever you choose basically the also like that's that's a, an element that we thought was important for people that okay. do not want to, to show their identity um but we do see that a, a large portion of people still log in with their with their twitter profile okay. and then that also gets shared on twitter uh, if they do it, we have a little geyser funders bot that tags the project owner and the user to say they funded the project. Uh, so also you have the projects and you have the grants. Yes, you can see at the top we have the projects. Uh, I'll show the screen here. Uh, it's our current landing page. Mm -hmm. And this is like a discovery view. So we have a, a grid of all the projects that are active on the platform right now, we have about um, let's see, twelve or so projects, and um, at the top here, we've had a first uh, round of grants that Mick was very involved with. So uh, I think I'll let him say more about those. Yeah, congrats sure. on this uh, grants part. By the way, I I checked the projects that applied for a grant, and there were so many amazing ones. I don't know how you managed to pick. <laughs> the winners, but I'm sure it was a hard process. Yeah, so the grants uh, was really uh, an effort to, to help support this creator ecosystem and um, support as well as recognize because honestly, you know, we, we, we give away one one Bitcoin to like 45 different uh, projects and, you know, that may be, uh, you know, some, and, but, but if you divide it up in 45 projects, you know, projects don't, don't get like it's not life-changing sort of money right but but mm -hmm. what we noticed is that people really uh really appreciated actually the fact that they're you know a lot of these projects are doing this for fun for for pleasure for for passion uh, and so being uh within the grants is really a form of recognizing uh what what they were doing um the idea of the grants came came about by kind of realizing that there were a lot of that there are some Bitcoiners that are wealthy that want to support the ecosystem, uh, and they but they don't really have the time or, or uh, to, to to really focus on supporting, uh, looking at each specific specific project. And so they want to have this kind of group of people that can help essentially uh, spread spread the funds around. Um, and and this is also the same for for for, pro, for companies, right? So Wallet of Satoshi, for example, doesn't have the time to kind of go around and spreading funds like to all these different projects individually. And so they donated $1,000 uh, to, to, to Geyser for us to, um, you know, through the board, uh, decide who, the, who, to, who to get the funds uh, out to. So what we did is we, we got together some, some prominent Bitcoiners, you could say, uh, Brad Mills, Jack Mozuko, uh, Lucas from Lightning Labs, uh, Connor Ocus from Spiral, Desiree Dickinson from Thunder, uh, Daniel Prince of this podcast and content and book and crypto graffiti to go through the different uh, uh, grants, which is the education grant, the culture grant, and the builders grant, and like go to in, in depth to the projects and, uh, and essentially then evaluate them. And As also, that, the board you have is perfect. You have the VC guy, you have the toxic guy, you have the gamers, designers, artists, everyone basically. It's very diverse, like they would say. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Very diverse. Uh, and we thought that was that was important. Um, uh, and yeah, and so like some of them focus, say, like, you know, more on some things like uh, cryptography is very into the, the creative 
uh, the artist. So he did a lot of the just that, whereas uh, you know some of the others did like uh, uh, you know other others did all of the grants. And how it worked is like you know we made it easy, so we kind of gone through it and cleaned up all the data. And there were you know a few applications that were like you know full of shit coinery. So we said, look, I'm sorry, but you know we really focus on Bitcoin only projects. Uh, make sure that you know really the quality is good, the effort is good, um, and we we evaluated them in three different ways. So one is like how much impact can this project have, right? Okay. Uh, which is really key consideration. The second consideration is um, uh, what are their needs? Like, could they get funding elsewhere? Like some podcasts, like usually can get funding through sponsorships or, you know, selling merch and stuff like that. So how much you really need a grant? And then thirdly is, do you have some proof of work? Do you have some history, do you have some recognizability. Uh, do you have a history to prove that you're going to go ahead and do this stuff. Or you have a reputation or a reputation. Something. Correct. Exactly. So like, and then there was like, is there something else that's really interesting about it that, you know, it doesn't fit into these three boxes. And so mm-hmm. for these four, four key different criteria, then they went ahead and did evaluation and we kind of took averages of those. Uh, and uh, based on that and a few other factors in a final conversation, then we made those, those decisions. So yeah, so that's that's that. Um, and so yes, yeah, so essentially we give out the grants around 45 different projects, um, some of which are you know pretty big, like, you know, films on Bitcoin documentaries, which are really bullish about guys. We have like four or five guys are uh, uh, films or Bitcoin documentaries that are being being built right now that are being, you know, works in progress. So yes. I think I think what we're doing with the with this whole thing is that actually we're, we're planting the seeds of the next bull market, really. That's, that's what's happening. I, I agree with that. Like, you know, this is also good to have support uh, during the bear market for a lot of the projects because, yeah, people uh, say ha- have saved up in Bitcoin and like when the prices go down, their uh, purchasing power like goes down for a short period of time. And yeah, this boost just helps them keep going, basically, which is amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that. And I'm happy to share what our next plans are as well. Uh, yeah, that would be nice to get some exclusive geyser font content. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So this, what you're seeing is, is what we call geyser projects, which is um, essentially what, you know, a, new, a project is, uh, if you look at what a project is now, you go on geyser. You'll be able to see like run with Bitcoin looks like this. It's literally just a static page of what we're moving towards is something like this, which is um, essentially a page of the project, right? So you see here is, is a title, a description, you know, uh, some high level summary of the project. You can see that it's running. You can still see the, the project URL, so the, sorry, the lightning address, the QR code, uh, and stuff like that. And then if you scroll down, you can see the entries. So the entries are like, I guess you could call them like blog posts, blog uh, blog posts. that, you know, you can, and you can essentially click and, and look into detail into the project and like update as a creator, you can update your, your, your followers. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously right, or as much as you want. And this, this is a really powerful way of, of engaging with your community. Uh, and yeah, for example, Paco's project run with Bitcoin is uh, is one of the best examples for this because he is always on the move and he has always a lot to share. So exactly, yeah. exactly. And so if you go down, you can see you know rewards and also there's milestones as well, uh, mm-hmm. which you can you know really show like you know essentially as a more dynamic. So there actually there will be no more like what's your goal. It's all about milestones. Milestones. Uh, Continuously exactly. progressing the project. It could be what Mick is mentioning here, um, other forms of contributions. Uh, and that is something we've seen with, with Geyser itself. Uh, we'll, soon enough, we'll have a Geyser project on Geyser, uh, some, some Geyser inception there. Uh, but on the community side, we've had such positive feedback, so so much feedback from the product side and yeah, illustrations or just sharing, sharing the project over and over again. Uh, yeah, we have the website also yeah so for example after we set up my project we had like a small chat and yeah we talked about how 
things can improve and what you guys were planning as well which which is always good yeah we, we you know we're very bullish on crowdfunding and bullish on crowdfunding on lightning and bitcoin because we, we kind of realize that um especially with bitcoin this is something people are so passionate about and yeah. we, we discovered is that it's not enough as well to fund like people really want to be involved in projects like said or said people some random guys just made some art for us and now it's like uh what well, we see the landing page that that uh, um that icon there is you know just a contribution and i think it that's true for projects it's a gift and i think it's full of this examples for other projects like people don't want to just fund the project people fund projects because they want to see them happen and because they want to see them happen more quickly and because they want to be part of them but another yeah. way that they can be part of them is by actually contributing in some way so we definitely want to make that a part of it and actually as another example if you look at what uh defending bitcoin crowdfunding company which has been fantastic the hot or not project what's been really particular again is that community-based thing right the fact that everyone from all walks of life came together and made stickers made art built a website uh and some it also sold art on uh, uh, uh on 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 uh, on uh, the name uh, scarcity, uh, scarcity, right? scarcity yeah. right to to auction off so that's going to be possible on geyser because now you can create a content you can create a piece of content all the fast flow all the sats flow to geyser sorry all to the project um and also you'll be able also uh, not right, right away but after like create rewards that you mm -hmm. created that again the sats go to towards a project so there's ways for you to contribute and also all those um, in, in ways that are not, there's not just funding, but actually helping the project succeed. It's good. I, I mean, I think the crowdfunding in Bitcoin has a good future ahead because more people are using Lightning, more people are building on Bitcoin and yeah, they want to help each other. By the way, did you, are you following the, the case, Hodnonaut versus Craig, right? Painfully so. <laughs> yeah, dude, Craig's lawyer quoted Dieter Bob, and I was like, no. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> it was like, how desperate are you to quote Dieter Bob? You know, so anyhow, it was funny. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait for that to, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I feel really bad for Haraman, but I mean, he's doing it for all of us. I know it's crazy. This part is not the party is really worried about. The London part is more annoying because of the libel laws and all that stuff. But right, 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 right. Yeah. So, uh, Stelios, should we go back to your screen sharing and show how easy it is to fund a project? Yeah, I need to get back to the the project view. So here we are back on your project. Uh, actually, I will. Open your project. No, um, see. you want to try a different one? Yeah, Maybe let's do a different one. one. Let's do. Uh, yeah, let's do the last revolution because I see that it didn't. It's a, it's a new project, I guess, right? Yeah. So this one is a documentary. Um, mm -hmm. And from a, from a girl, a, a German girl, that is, has a very interesting story, but I think Mick knows a little bit more about her, interacting with her a bit more. Uh -huh. hmm. So I'll for the funding flow is really straightforward. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, so I, I was on mute. But yeah, basically, she's yeah, she's doing great work. Uh, I think she, she has a history in doing documentaries and uh, passionate about Bitcoin and wants to make this really her next big project. Um, it, it is it is ambitious, an ambitious documentary. Um, uh, you know, wants wants to kind of really go go to El Salvador from the United States and really trace the journey and what people around the world really think about it. Um, and I think focus focusing on on, on people and. Um, uh, and some some like also bitcoin influencers really there's no scarcity of, of this like we just need so much of this and the more documentaries the better you know even like your experience and her experience would not be the same you know because of the cultural background and so 
there's really no scarcity to that. Right. Bullish on this country is very bullish. Bullish, bullish yeah. on, on Bitcoin culture in general, actually. Uh, and shout out to, to Brad for pointing that out to us, that Bitcoin culture is something that deserves more attention and, and also more funding. Yeah, Brad is doing a real good job supporting uh, the Bitcoin culture. Like uh, at the, even at the scarcity auction, I like bid on some pieces, but every time it was him that won the pieces, so he outbid me every time. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Brad like, is a deep pocket. <laughs> he's the apex bidder, you know, apex bidder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good guy. Day. Yeah, so do you want to generate a QR code, a QR code for me? Yeah, so I, I would click on this on, on this project. Um, how, how many would you like to send to? I still like 20,000 sets. So I can switch over I to don't, I don't do the others. Um, it might be nice to also point out here that we do donation-based crowdfunding and also reward-based. So on this project days, in yes. particular, a user could select uh, one of those rewards and get featured what? in the credits oh, or, or get a, a question and answer. Um, and these come with varying prices. Perfect. Yeah. So the podcasting 2.0 integration is not live yet, right? It is. It is. Is it? It's live. Yeah. yeah. Come on. So, so if this is a if this is going to be a podcast, you can redirect. Uh, I don't know percentage of all the tips you receive to a to your, your guys' project. Oh, the QR code is there, but my camera doesn't focus. I'll try Aldi, but I don't know how much funds I have here. Damn it, it's too small for me. Okay, yeah, might want to zoom in. But... Yeah, okay. Does that work? Yes, it worked. You know, things always work faster when you are not recording them. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Or things always get fixed once you take them to the repair place or whatever. So, right. But it worked. It should be there if you refresh. Okay. Yeah, okay, it, should, it should appear there. That's funny. It should be appear uh -huh. with, the, with the green sign. Yeah. yeah. But we are recording, so it takes time. So like, something else. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Since we're recording, something has to go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Are you sure that it's uh, been sent? Yeah, yeah, it did send. I, I had the. Yeah, it's gone. I have the pre image and everything. Okay. Let me try refreshing. Oh, there we are. Okay. Yeah. Well, we discovered the bug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the more you try, the more bugs you discover. So it's, yeah. Perfect. Yay. I was there. So good. Um, and before, uh, yeah, we hang up. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't have any further questions. Uh, if you have any more feedback, about the project or you know a final message that you want to give yeah it's a good question i think uh yeah if you're if you're a creator if you want to contribute to to making bitcoin happen um you don't need to be a developer you can be you know a normal pleb that wants to contribute and has an idea of something else that could be cool to do mm -hmm. um bitcoin lightning make it possible for you to receive donation from everywhere anywhere in the world so uh, you can really leverage the power of the plebs uh the, the power of global crowdfunding power of bitcoin um, and we're just you know there as a platform as a as we're discussing as the as a fertile ground where these ideas can 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 happen we just offer the tooling uh, for you to kind of make those ideas into awesome projects that have real impact in the world so yeah so consider guys yeah, and for example, uh, yeah, in Turkey we don't have Kickstart. Right. Kickstart. Yeah. I mean, you cannot join to Kickstarter with a project from Turkey, for example. So, yeah, it's exactly an opportunity for yeah cases like that. 
and i also have like a hundred dollar budget uh so split to 50 and 50 and i'll donate on behalf of you yeah just shield me your favorite projects well i actually i just found out why it didn't work so i'd be happy to do a, a redo with a proper demonstration because i had the albi pop-up show up in a different uh -huh. window and i didn't see it and with albi okay. we have a different verification uh step so with the web LN, it's a different yeah i'm just going to remove it from here so it doesn't pop up and we could go again okay let's try should we try tatum uh -huh. mm. 50. 50? Yeah. Or, 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 you know, yeah. So no, sorry, I have I think... We could do it now or we could do it later, but whatever. Sure. Have you, have you seen about this? Have you seen this project? Shots yes. Like so it's a um, podcast or interviews. Uh, yes. Talking about mining. He's from the right. No. Compass mining. Compass mining. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, but uh, he's going to be doing like uh, different styles of interviews, more like uh, entertaining and comic. Yeah, yeah let's get a QR code. Um, so I, I also see here he has a reward for $50 exactly, uh, with mm -hmm. a company sticker on ASIC. Um, yeah, we could do a Satoshi TV sticker. Nice. Sounds like a plan. Um, yeah. Satoshi TV. Yes. So we're going to fund. Yes, let's get the sticker. <laughs> but do we need to zoom in? in room. OK, yes, we need to zoom in a little bit. Okay, should receive it. Yeah, here we go. Yes. Now, now it worked without the LB interception. Yes. Perfect. Smoothly. Yeah. So we yeah, we also got a reward from Gazer Fund. Fund. Refreshing. I think isn't the counter a little supposed to be a bit higher? Fifty. Oh uh, yeah. Bitcoin like should be. Yes. Yeah, almost a million. Almost a million sets. So it's, a million five to go. Perfect. <laughs> Getting nice. closer. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, for joining me. I was really good to hear more about Geyser, and yeah, hopefully, we'll get some more Turkish people learn about Geyser as well. And yeah, I'll be around the platform, and yeah, see yeah. people get tattoos up and all that stuff. So. And if anyone wants to to reach out to us, we're pretty active on Twitter at Geyser Fund as well. Yeah, Perfect. and also be well, hiring as well. So if you're a dev looking for to get involved in a Bitcoin project, let us know. Yeah. What list, What kind of devs are you looking for? Front end mainly. Uh, front, front end. end uh, and um, yeah, also part time. Um, but if, yeah. if you think you yeah, can contribute uh, in some way, reach out and we can, we can chat. This one is a uh, yeah first of its kind uh, a YouTube uh, yeah job recruiting platform now <laughs> yeah. basically oh yeah okay perfect yeah thanks again and we'll see each other yeah goodbye thank you Cheers. thank you Sakura. Peer to Peer'ın bu bölümünün de sonuna geldik bu bölümü Satoshi TV üzerinden YouTube vasıtasıyla veya Satoshi Radyo üzerinden podcast olarak dinleyebilirsiniz. Umarım bu bölümde hoşunuza gitmiştir ve önümüzdeki bölümlerde görüşürüz.